Greetings, denizens of the Empire. It's Jabari here. Happy Black History Month. For the past couple of years, the month of February has been a time where I've been posting short videos about the amazing accomplishments, achievements, and interesting facts about our black ancestors. From the system of divination practiced by the Yoruba people, which is based on binary code, to the Caesarian sections performed by pre-colonial Banyoro doctors, and even the practice of vaccination being taught to Americans by an African slave, based on traditions practiced by his people back in Africa. You can check out these videos at the end screen. So with that, I want to continue on with this tradition of posting more amazing black history during Black History Month. As with the tradition of this series, I want to take it a step further than your typical black history. As much as I am equally grateful as I am impressed with the civil rights leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. and Rosa Parks, the sad truth is that our mistreatment, struggle, and subsequent freedom against white oppression seems to be the only highlight of our history or greatness taught to us here in the West. In reality, there is so much more to our history than that, and it stretches back much earlier than our time here in the United States. Just as white people learn about the greatness of other white people throughout the past, even prior to the founding of the United States all the way back to their deep European roots in classical Greece and Rome, I think it's important that black people have the same luxury, and I feel like it is absolutely necessary in order for us to have an appreciation for ourselves and our people. You can't fully and truly appreciate who you are without appreciating where you come from, so for the month of February, I'm going to be releasing a series of short videos describing several accomplishments, highlights, and just generally interesting facts about what was going on in Africa without the influence of Europeans. And without all the need to just focus all of our attention on Egypt or Carthage either. This series will be unapologetically focused on sub-Saharan African civilization. When we think of the many engineering marvels that have existed throughout world history, we tend to conjure up iconic images that saturate popular media. The Great Pyramids of Giza, the Great Wall of China, the Taj Mahal, the Eiffel Tower, or the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Even marvels of beauty that no longer exist such as the Hanging Gardens of Babylon excite our imagination. With the exception of Australia, virtually every continent of the world has historical monuments that show true testament to the engineering capabilities of ancient and medieval peoples. However, Africa tends to be ignored in this context, with the exception of Egypt's pyramids of course. Today we will discuss a monument found deep within the rainforest of sub-Saharan Africa that was not only larger than the Great Pyramids, but quite possibly longer than the Great Wall of China. An Atlas VPN has something even larger. A discount. Currently, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount for their three year plan for just $1.99 per month and with a 30 day money back guarantee. The deal won't last long though, so make sure you check it out by clicking the link in the video description below. Atlas VPN allows you to browse the internet anonymously, hiding your virtual location by assigning you a new IP address and DNS and then tunneling you through a network from any country of your choosing. Once the information reaches the specified VPN server, it is then decrypted and sent to your location. This allows your data to remain safe and secure, with the VPN server basically serving as a trusted middleman, so to speak. In addition to this, it enables you to watch videos, movies, and TV shows that may not be available in your country. Prices and premiums that are region specific can also be bypassed by using Atlas VPN, allowing for you to find the cheapest deals regardless of where you're located. With just the click of a button, Atlas VPN also comes with a data breach monitor which scans your email address and notifies you if it was involved in any potential data breaches. Atlas VPN can be used on Windows, Apple, and Android devices. If you sign up using my referral link, you get 82% off of their 3 year plan. Trust me when I say I turn the fine print inside out on this one, it's just a crazy, crazy huge deal. In a period spanning roughly between the years of 40 BCE and 1100 CE, a small kingdom emerged in what is now Nigeria, a kingdom known as Igodomigodo. 
In its early days, it consisted of several villages and towns, loosely centralized in a mega community structure. During this period, a complex network of earthen walls were constructed as physical borders between the communities, and as the centuries progressed, the small kingdom became increasingly less stable. The ruling dynasty, known as the Olgiso, or Kings of the Sky, were overthrown in the 12th century and replaced by a new dynasty, the Oba Dynasty, and the kingdom was renamed to Ubinu, or what is known today as Benin. If you'd like a more detailed two-part documentary of this kingdom, you can gain instant access to it as well as other African Kingdom documentaries by becoming a patron. The link to this can be found below. So anyway, these innumerable walls continued to expand throughout the centuries, and as centralization intensified, a state-funded initiative incorporated them into a government project, not only connecting them into a singular network of walls, but also to a network of city walls, which were built in an interlocking structure, a series of concentric walls radiating from one focal point around the palace grounds, and then the city itself, and all the way out to the surrounding countryside. This layout was common throughout West Africa, including the neighboring Yoruba Kingdom of Ife, but all West African city walls paled in comparison to the size and scale of those surrounding Benin. It is estimated that a labor force of 5,000 men working 10 hours a day would have been required to complete the inner wall alone within a single dry season or three-month period. However, it is more likely that the project would have been stretched out over several dry seasons and with a much smaller labor force. Construction of its remaining walls continued well into the 15th century, and upon its completion, it comprised what may be possibly the largest man-made structure in history. Fred Pierce of The Guardian estimates that at their zenith, the walls of Benin were four times longer than the Great Wall of China, and that the construction consumed more material than the Great Pyramid of Cheops. However, UNESCO puts the walls of Benin at 9,942 miles in length, while the Great Wall of China measures 12,427 miles. This disparity may have to do with the different methods of measurement as accurate measurements of Benin are difficult to discern in their heavily ruinous and overgrown state. All current maps of the Benin city walls are only tentatively created based on the limited archaeological work that has been conducted. In any regard, the Benin city walls are known without any doubt to be one of the most astonishingly massive feats of engineering accomplished by mankind in the Middle Ages and earlier. The Guinness Book of World Records describes the walls of Benin as the world's largest earthworks carried out prior to the mechanical era. In 1668, Dutch explorer Ulfric Dapper described the Queen section of the Benin walls as follows. The town comprising the Queen's court is about 5 or 6 miles in circumference, or leaving the court outside 3 miles inside its gates. It is protected at one side by a wall 10 feet high made of double stockades of big trees tied to each other by crossbeams fastened crosswise and stuffed up with red clay, solidly put together. This wall only surrounds the town on one side, there being on the other, where there is no wall, a morass and close underwood, which affords no little protection and strength to the town. The town possesses several gates, eight or nine feet in height and five in width, with doors made of a whole piece of wood hanging or turning on a peg, like the peasants' fences here in this country. The king's court is square and stands at the right-hand side when entering the town by the gate of Goton, and it's certainly as large as the town of Harlem, and entirely surrounded by a special wall, like that which encircles the town. The keys to the gates that Dapper described still exist in museum collections to present day. Additionally, the massive walls of the city were surrounded by a deep, wide moat. The digging of the moat also provided the red clay necessary for the construction of the walls themselves, as well as the aforementioned tree trunk stockades. In fact, the walls weren't technically walls at all. While their defensive capabilities proved analogous to proper walls, they were really more of a steep defensive mounds. Those that interconnected within the towns and villages of the city were more proper walls than those surrounding the city itself. The city walls were described by Landolf in this account. 
A ditch more than 20 feet wide and as deep surrounds the town, and the soil taken out is made on the city side into talus, on which a thorny hedge has been planted so thick that not even an animal can get through. This moat full of thorns was also described as being dry at the bottom with trees growing out of it. Unfortunately, the walls of Benin barely exist anymore. They consist of nothing more than overgrown mounds of earth covered in trash and in some places, they are being deliberately cleared out for modern Nigerian urban development. Unfortunately, despite its recognition by UNESCO, little effort has been made to preserve this invaluable monument to the history of mankind. Its earthy construction also makes it less easy to identify or maintain than similar structures around the world that are composed of materials such as stone. Even if we can't save the whole of the structure, we can only hope that some portions of it at least are preserved and proudly displayed for tourists and locals alike to appreciate, and at the very least, we can hope that perhaps more effort will be made by the Nigerian government to conduct more thorough archaeological work on the remaining walls and map out as much as possible before it's lost to history forever. I hope you all enjoyed this short video. For more black history, stay tuned for this year's next episode of my black history series where we will discuss innovations, significant events, and interesting facts about black history far beyond the surface level knowledge that we are accustomed to learning on American soil. For sources, check out my website, linked below. If you'd like to support future projects, you can do so there as well, or by clicking the join button below, or by becoming a patron. I hope you all enjoyed the video, thanks for watching as usual, and always remember, we don't come from nothing.